Do you remember your last beach holiday? Can you picture it for me? Can you picture that soft white powdery sand? That clear blue ocean? And the one blemish that was there underfoot? Slippery, slimy, seaweed. What does it mean to you? I'm guessing not much, although hopefully a tasty snack. They see one man's trash as another man's treasure. And I, Salvo Shah, am here today to talk about what seaweed means to me. Imagine it's the year 2050. There are 10 billion people on the planet. And climate change means it's too hot and dry for you to grow crops on your land. <coughs> and even if you could, there's so many floods and hurricanes, there's a high chance your crop would have been destroyed anyway. You're hungry. You're starving. You need a new way to produce food. 108 million people were in food crises like this last year, and numbers set to skyrocket. And seaweed can be the answer. Seaweed can be grown near shore, meaning it doesn't need any <coughs> land, fresh water, or fertilizer, and it's incredibly high in vitamins A, B, C, and iodine, something a lot of us in the Western world lack. So when it comes to superfoods, Move over the cake because seaweed's about to blow you out of the water. And seaweed farms work really well together with fish farms and shellfish farms, as the byproducts from one farm work as inputs for another, meaning when you grow all three together, you get much higher yields than when you grow them apart, making it an ideal solution for coastal communities all around the world, providing them with a sustainable food source and a balanced diet. And seaweed isn't just nutritious. It's also delicious. It's used in many top restaurants all around the world, and it's very high in that fish taste, umami. And here's the kicker, ladies and gentlemen. Seaweed can even help you live longer. Japan has the highest life expectancy in the world, and Okinawa has the highest life expectancy in Japan. They also have the highest per capita consumption of kombi in the world, the type of seaweed used in miso soup. And there's a really strange link between this life expectancy and that seaweed consumption. So it's time to start eating your sea green. And seaweed isn't just food for humans too. It's food for animals. There's a particular species of seaweed that when you add a tiny amount of it to cattle feed, 2% of a cow's diet, it then reduces their methane output by 99%. Now, according to the UN, cows produce close to a fifth of global greenhouse gas emissions. And in a really simple way, seaweed can virtually eliminate this. And speaking of greenhouse gas emissions, as we emit more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, a lot of this gets absorbed into the ocean, acidifying them. And ocean acidification is set to increase 150% by 2100, a level not seen for over 400,000 years toxic for all of our marine life. However, not all hope is lost. Seaweed is a wonderful blue carpet safe. What this means is that seaweed grows really quickly, 10 times as fast as the fastest growing land-based plant, <coughs> has a really high carbon content, and it has cell walls that don't break down quickly. So as the seaweed grows, it absorbs a lot of carbon dioxide back from the ocean and stores it for a long time really helping to mitigate and even reverse that acidification process, turning sad oceans into happy ones. And there are other ways in which seaweed can save the oceans too. Does anyone know how many plastic bottles were used around the world last year? Put your hand up if you think it's between one and five billion. Okay. How about between five and 20 billion? Okay, between 20 and 100 billion. So we actually used 480 billion plastic bottles last year. And by 2050, we'll have more plastic in the ocean than we will fish. This is Uho. Uho is a bottle made from alginate, a seaweed extract. It's 100% biodegradable. It's less energy intensive to manufacture than plastics. And it's already cheaper to produce. So if we scale up seaweed production, we can invest in bioplastics like this. 
and we can avoid a future where we have oceans full of plastic. Unfortunately, I think you'd all still agree that we live in a fossil fuel world, and not everything will be able to run off electricity, no matter how hard Elon Musk tries. Seaweed is a great contender as a biofuel, as not only does it not need any land, fresh water, or fertilizer, a study from the Norwegian University of Science and Technology found yields of 79% when converting kelp biomass to bio oil, an outstandingly high number, and it has a really low freezing point, making it ideal for use in place. So, new interesting technology breakthroughs means we're able to grow seaweed in much more innovative ways, at higher yields, and with less labor intensity, making it finally viable for large-scale farming in the Western world. And we at Sustainable Seaweed are looking to do exactly this, to establish and scale seaweed farms around the UK and then further beyond, for all of the reasons I've discussed so far. It's time to change the way that we see things, to reset our prejudices, and preconceptions. I hope I've inspired some of you today to look at seaweed with a fresh new light and a new perspective. And by adopting this new perspective and looking at things with an optimistic glint in our eye, we're able to discover the most incredible uses and solutions from the things we take most for granted. And in doing so, we can work together to make the world a better place. Thank you.